Hey guys, welcome to Death and All of His Friends. Today we're just going to look at this narrative. It kind of goes off away from Cain and traces his his family line before returning back to Adam and Eve. And I think there's a, an insight here that I really just want to chew on. I just want to meditate on and I want it to send us into prayer. So let's read the text. Cain made love to his wife and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Enoch was then building a city, and he named it after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad was the father of Mahujael, and Mahujael was the father of Methusael, and Methusael was the father of Lamech. Lamech married two women, one named Ada and the other Zillah. Ada gave birth to Jabal. He was the father of those who lived in tents and raised livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all who play stringed instruments and pipes. Zillah also had a son, Tubal-Cain, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. Tubal-Cain's sister was Nama. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, Listen to me, wives of Lamech, hear my words. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for injuring me. If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech seventy-seven times. A couple of things to note here. One of the things that we find encouraging about this, let's focus on that first, is that we have this kind of general grace of God. Remember when God told humanity to fill and multiply and to rule over and reign the earth, theologians call this the cultural mandate, the idea that God would co-create with humanity, that something would happen and you know, they put him in an orchard and so they, they tend to the earth, they care for it. And here, even through the fallen line of Cain, you have these kind of fathers of different crafts, right? The the idea that, that one of them would be the father of animal husbandry, the other one has advancements in the arts and music, and another one has advancements in technology and metallurgy. And so how are we to, to read this? The, the Genesis author is kind of showing us, more than telling us, that God was with them, that, that there was still goodness, inherent goodness in even this fallen humanity. So we might have this suspect view of Cain's line, uh, and, and we're going to get to that, but we also understand that God is generally with all of human culture. He's not totally removed from any human culture. So let that continue to, to, as we, to trace the narrative of sin, that we see the marks of God's grace and his presence even as in a group that has withdrawn from him or been exiled from him. So let's return to that exile. Remember what Cain was afraid of at the exile was someone murdering him, that he was actually afraid of the thing that he introduced into the world. And that's why he wanted God to mark him. And God said he would avenge him sevenfold. But did Cain believe God? Well, some theologians have seen Cain's city building as an act of rebellion and further evidence of his distrust of God. The city, and, and especially you think of ancient Near Eastern cities, they're really confined by their walls. They're defensive in nature. And Cain as a city builder seems to be Cain, the one who does not trust in this mark, that he is building his own defense, that in a way we could think of him becoming more and more calcified against God, his spiritual decay becoming more absolute. Now. Why would I say this? Well, by the end of this, we meet his descendant, Lamech. And Lamech is a problem. Theologians have noted that Lamech treats his wives as if they were property. It's the first report of polygamy in the Bible. And he's singing to his wives, celebrating his murderous heart, that he killed somebody for injuring him, a young man. And that if anybody is going to be avenged, it's going to be him. We have someone whose violence is celebrated. You see, what started as a seed in Cain, the struggle, has been passed down to the generations. And as the grace of God was amplified through the artistry and the development, the cultural developments of the line of Cain, something else has been amplified. Sin patterns. It's with this that I want to send us into prayer. What this text seems to suggest, given its genre and its nature, is that sin patterns can carry themselves throughout the generations. That something our forefather has done can create a pattern in the family systems. You may be familiar with family systems kind of thinking. It's something that's that's popular in, in psychology and ministry practice. The idea that inside of a family system, there are 
traumas that are perpetuated and begin to shape the, the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. And so what we're looking here is at the intergenerationality of sin, that sin can unfold in, in a family system. And I would even say in a, in a cultural group, in a tribe, there are sin patterns that become celebrated that become enshrined and passed on, echoing his ancestors, you know, avenge narrative as if it's something to be celebrated and this, as if he's eclipsed Cain, like, oh, Cain, you know, he just murdered his, his, his brother and was avenged sevenfold. I'm going to be 77 times avenged because I'm that much more of a big deal. I'm, I'm that much worse. So, so let me just ask a question. So break it away from this, this text and kind of take a look at it. Can we fall into the patterns of our parents or our parents' parents or our parents' parents' parents? I think we can. I think this text is saying that that's the case. And it's all throughout the biblical narrative that theme resurfaces over and over again, that family systems do bear on the areas of, of sin patterns and maybe anticipates them to some degree. As a response to this text, as we've just hovered over it and thought about it, why don't we let this launch us into prayer for this session? That we would contemplate the ways in which sin is intergenerational. So let these ruminations stir us into prayer and reflection. What sin has shaped your family tree? How do you fall into similar patterns as your ancestors? Pray to God for awareness of sinful patterns. May we reflect the family of Christ.